Well, what do you know? I'm driving home in my car from Dahlonega, Georgia, where we've just completed a banjo camp. And as I'm driving, um, thoughts wander through my head. Uh, whatever that Christmas poem is about, uh, visions of candy canes or whatever. So these, these thoughts are coming to my head. And what is occurring to me is that in all camps, and hopefully not quite as much in my camps, a lot of discussion is uh, it revolves around a, how to play a particular lick or showing the lick, maybe writing it out on a tab or talk about how to improvise, how to play backup. And one of the issues is the attendees at the camp assume that if they have the lick written out or an arrangement written out that somehow this is gonna let them play. And the issue is many times they don't have the technique to play that particular song or play that backup at the speed that it's being played. So I thought of five different things that are happening. One is as the student is starting to try to apply the new lick and put it in the middle of a song, that as he starts approaching the lick, maybe two or three measures before the lick, they become somewhat anxious, and this throws the timing off. The second thing that happens sometimes is you arrive at the lick, you're in time, and for some reason you miss the first note of the lick, which is the downbeat of that particular measure, and of course that then causes the other measures, uh, the other notes, excuse me, in the measure to be out of time. So then when you hit the next downbeat or the next measure, you're coming in off balance. So it just becomes a cascading effect. And of course, as uh, all this is going on, the player's becoming more and more stressed out, which makes it even worse. So that's the second thing. The third thing is that uh, they're trying to use the lick before they know the lick. So maybe in the process of learning the lick, they've played it two or three different ways, and so they get to that downbeat or the start of the lick, and all of a sudden they're going, their brain kind of goes into hold because there's two or three different ways that they've done it. It's inconsistent, and of course, when you hesitate, then the, the timing goes away. The next situation that happens is that you've memorized the lick, but based on the speed, you don't have the technique to, to play the lick at that particular speed. Or there may be a technique in the middle of the lick, let's say a hammer on or a pull off and when you get to that particular technique you stay on it maybe a little too long and once again that knocks you out of balance and that's four things and I said there were five but I can't uh, remember what the uh, what the fifth thing is so learning licks and trying to use them requires a tremendous amount of repetition and time. And the lick, in order to be useful, you have to get to the point where you're playing it exactly the same way each time. And you're, you also have to have the technique. So in our camps, what we do, or where are this, when we uh, first see students, we look and see if they're hearing the downbeat, which is the start of all the licks. And if not, then we talk about ways to tighten that up. 
The second thing is we experiment with easy licks. We take an easy lick that the student can play, and then we insert that lick in a song. And uh, then if that works and they're hearing the downbeat or where the lick starts, then they can try a more difficult lick. If you're learning a lick that has a technique in it that you have never used or never used in that timing and you get out your metronome, you're looking at anywhere from an hour to five hours of repetition before that lick becomes your own. What many people do is they'll play the lick and they'll play it, let's say, twice in a row correctly, and they'll assume that they have the lick when, in fact, it really needs to be reinforced more. So, I just, as I say, I was just riding down the road, and I am becoming more and more aware of some of the uh, issues that I would say the majority of banjo players that I come in contact with have, and that we're working on ways to help them and of course the the main thing is to slow way down to repeat things a lot to give the student feedback and then to sit with the student while the student repeats it multiple times we uh, use multi-track recorders we talk about using a metronome, which is far different than what people think it is. Uh, It's a very valuable tool, uh, mostly for drills. We never use a metronome when we play a full song because it drives you crazy. And then, of course, we've done over 60 of these clinics, so we're becoming experts in knowing how to deal with certain issues. We also know how to pay students meaning uh, as you're going through the day, uh, you need to take breaks, and during the breaks, you can't be sitting there playing the banjo. We actually have these two cornhole boards, so we relax and do that. We tell jokes. We take our mind off of the banjo for a little while. We also uh, have hired a vegan chef, and the food that we feed uh, the students uh, we're, we're not using high fat sugars and stuff so the student doesn't have that crash that usually happens in the middle of the afternoon if you've eaten a big lunch let's say with a big dessert so we're uh, we're not perfect for sure and uh, never will be but we have certainly through trial and error come up with some things that I've not, I'm not aware that other people are using these particular strategies that we use. And the reason that I believe this to be true is as students come in, and if you've had 60 clinics, that means we've had well over 300 different students, and not one student has said that another teacher is using these specific techniques that we use to help people and our reviews have been extraordinarily good and also we're getting a lot of repeat people because they've achieved success and they'd like to continue well that's it that's my uh, philosophy for right now and I'll put it on there and uh, if it if it helps you great and if you have uh or if you are curious about all this and want to uh, uh, possibly inquire about a camp, you can see some videos on YouTube of the campers playing, and you'll see the energy they're playing with and the enthusiasm. You'll see everybody's alert. It's got lots of uh, energy from good eating. And uh, you can either message me or you can go to jeffhowald.com that's jeffhowald.com and of course you're more likely to get there if you spell my name correctly and uh, or if you have questions you can call me I don't care I'll talk to you Uh, text me Uh, 
In fact, you can go to uh, banjowarehouse.com. We sell a lot of banjos too. And I think that my contact information is on Banjo Warehouse. And if it isn't, uh, my son's phone number there is there. Call him and he'll give you my phone number. So you guys have a great day and uh, we'll talk to you later.